everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this really cool, this one right here, this really cool holiday scene of the child or Baby Yoda from the new Mandalorian series. Mm -hmm. Now, we're actually going to be streaming some video game footage from John. Yes, so this has just come out from EA Games. This is Star Wars The Fallen Order. And uh, thanks to a really cool YouTuber, I'll show him full screen because this artwork is so gorgeous. Look at this artwork on this. So some of the best artists in the world work in the video game industry or they work, you know, on Star Wars products. There's a bunch of concept art that's created. Um, all of this is an amazing industry with some incredibly talented people. And as an artist, every once in a while, I tend to get a little crazed and I do fan art because <laughs> I just can't help myself. I'm such a huge fan. And um, so is this uh, X Garbit? Yes, this is Garbit's video. Okay, so X Garbit found an Easter egg. Now, X Garbit is a YouTuber. If you play these video games and you're looking for a location to find really great Easter eggs and uh, amazing gameplay info, his channel is a great channel to follow. And this is his for uh, The Fallen Order where we find a... a uh, Yoda. Yoda. We don't know if it's a baby Yoda. I, we're not sure. This is he found. There's this some and, frogs though. Yeah, so, there's. And yeah, there's here's why it could be a baby Yoda. I'll tell you why. I have this theory because as we saw Yoda in Dagobah, he was a vegetarian, but we know their species is meat eating. Mm -hmm. Have a lot of opinions on this, and so <laughs> my theory is is that something connecting to what we're seeing in the Mandalorian. But as fans, we're having to deal with these sort of bridge stories right now. And we don't know how they're going to affect the larger story as a whole. So I'm pretty excited that X Garbit let us uh, use this footage. And we're really excited to shout out EA Games and The Fallen Order just released. If you've got people in your life, none of this is sponsored. I'm just trying to get away with painting Baby Yoda. Yes, we like Baby Yoda. This is all that's happening here. I really want to paint. It, he's He may not be named Yoda. We just suspect that Yoda. he's the love child of Yoda and uh, Yaddle. Yeah, yeah. But if you see Yaddle, you, yeah, you'll be like, is that really true? That can't be true. But maybe it is. I, and so I don't care. It's so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. Now, for those of you that are not Star Wars fans, I also did this version with an Aurora Borealis. And that'll be a step by step on the web page, which I will share after this video. And the website will have a traceable step by step uh, graphics of this image and step by step graphics of this image so that you can do whatever you want for your holiday. I just really want to paint this character like more than one time mm -hmm. is what's happening here. And your support in me doing this over here really helps me like uh, be a happy little artist and creator. So hopefully you're going to love doing your own version of the painting. I'm going to explain to you every part of the process. We're going to go through this step by step. So if you're doing this at home, you're going to get a great result. If you are really nervous about the drawing, just watch the video and then come back and check out the traceable and you can transfer that image on. I'll tell you when in the video you would do that, right? And you're gonna have the step-by-steps. So if you're anxious or if you're new, you're not gonna have to go solo. I know how you must be feeling. I'm feeling this way. I have looked for anything based on this character out there. I cannot believe they hit me with the show. Um, this is on Disney Plus. If you haven't seen it, if you're like, what is this? I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. This is the Mandalorian it's showing on the new Disney platform, Disney Plus. I have three kids, so I had to get it. And um, I was watching this with my son because Star Wars is an area that we sort of, um, we bridge. Right? Isn't that pretty much a good, it's like my son and I don't always have a lot in yeah. common. He's, a, he's, you know, he's into different stuff. But Star Wars is one of the places where he and I have a lot in common. So. We started watching the series together, and I have to say that the uh, concept art that they have at the end is some of the best I've ever seen. I'm so inspired. I just so admire everybody involved. And also, the series has been really enjoyable. So, um, but there's no plushies. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. N no, yeah, Don doesn't. There's no plushies. It is a... It, <sighs> ah! <laughs> Yeah. learn your fans we need our collectibles and our toys and our things so there's just a, not a lot out there and i thought you guys might like this for the holiday season just in case your family has gone through what my family has gone through but if not happy tree with uh aurora borealis you guys ready to just jump on in talk about the materials and get ready in the lesson oh yeah yes it's good mm -hmm. all right let's hop on in okay Woo! all right 
So I'm super proud of both of these. Um, this one uses some slightly different colors. I'll include that on the website, but we're going to be mostly going over the one that you see here. So this is a really cool silhouette of, let me move you out of the, out of the way, of the Baby Yoda. And we're going to call him the Baby Yoda, but really at this point in the series, he's called the Asset or the Child, <laughs> right? And is the super cutest thing you've ever seen, ever, 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 ever. Like, I can't even tell you how into that I actually am. Oh, no, I'm missing something. What are you missing? <laughs> I moved my cart. Oh. I'll go get that in a minute. Okay. So, here he is. Let's talk about the surface that I'm going to be using. I'll put him aside as my reference. We'll have picture in picture for you guys. It's up there. This is an 11 by 14 artboard. I get these in packs. I have some links in the description. Um, they are not affiliates. So, um, so, I don't believe any of the links that I did for you guys were affiliates. Uh, they're just links so you can find it. You can get these in store or online. Or Amazon might be. Uh, I don't know if I put any Amazons in. Oh, well, I think it was just the Michaels links for the stuff because I think we're using a lot of their stuff for this, even the brushes. We'll check it. If you see an Amazon link, it's an affiliate. Mm. If you see Michaels link, it's not an affiliate. <laughs> Mostly all the links are really just there so you can find stuff. I don't. You buy wherever you get the best deal. Yeah. That's my opinion. That's John's opinion. You yeah, buy where you get a good deal. But we try to put them in there where we can because, I mean, it doesn't hurt for us to, like, you know. Show you what you're to... using. Yeah. Now, the colors I'm going to be using for this are, uh, this is Artist Loft Level 3. Um, Artist Loft makes three grades of paint. They make a student paint, which I've done some videos and demoed on. They make a mid-grade paint, which I haven't gotten to try, and this Professional Level 3, which actually I really enjoy. Um, I pretty much, in the Michael store, buy this or Golden, and that's it. Um, of the paints that I'm getting in there and I really really love this and sometimes between the two I will still grab this because uh, It's really well pigmented. This is carbon black So we've got cadmium red carbon black titanium white and just a titch of phthalo blue now I Also have this product here. You can get this in a teeny tiny jar and it actually goes quite a long way This is the titanium white fluid and this is really nice if you want smooth lines or leveling paint or you want things to self-level out and uh, be more like a print. I really like these products and they generally carry a full range of them there. Just use the, the coupons. If you really, really don't want to use those, uh, you can try to use the Deco Art uh, Americana paint. I am going to be using some splattering tools to make the stars. I'm going to be using some of my fan brushes to do the tree. We're going to use a nice big bright um to get this painted in i would use if if you're getting your stuff at michael's i would use probably one of the uh serranos if you're not gonna do one of these from online which i do highly recommend i'm gonna use a dotting tool you can find these at beauty supply stores if you don't see them here and i'm gonna definitely be using this teeny tiny uh monogram liner and my number four round uh the monogram liner fantastic brush i love it so much so the first thing we're going to put out is the red because we have to paint the whole surface red. Now, we like to put wishes and intentions on our surfaces, on our canvases. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's only one wish or intention that we should put on this one. Yeah. And that one's uh, for the holidays. May the force be with you. Absolutely. And I don't care if you groaned. I don't care because I feel that in my heart. <laughs> and I just wish that for everyone watching. I truly hope the force is with you over the holidays. <laughs> and we try to put wishes and, and hopes in our canvas. And if you guys see some wishes, we have all of our at home. You guys put those wishes in your canvas. We appreciate that because that good energy out there in the universe just, you know, can't hurt anything. We could all use a little more positivity out there, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, creative with coffee. So we're drinking our coffee and we're painting. I've got my number 26 bright. It's You just basically want a big brush that's for acrylic painting with a nice stiff filament. I'm going to put some water into my brush. As you see here, I dip in and then I pull it out and I smooth that water into the heavy body paint, thinning its consistency. And I'm going to just go ahead and paint my whole surface red. Really? Yep. Just all red at first. I did this two different ways hmm. and um, I found the second way was probably the easier way, but you guys will see that in the step-by-steps, which are free. They're not any, it's not like extra money to have those. You just go by the website. I have to make the web page after I finish this 
a video because uh, we have to go grab the link and put it. And if you have trouble watching the Facebooks. Because uh, technology. <laughs> if you have trouble watching the Facebook Lives, uh, you'll find that it's easier to watch from our website. Mm, yeah. Easier to find, easier to watch. And that's where you find like that beginning series Technique Tuesday that everybody's always trying to find but can't find. It's on the website. Just search Facebook or Technique. And all eight videos will pull up. And I highly recommend if you're new to painting, just watch all eight. Because it'll explain it all to you real fast. Oh, no. But it's hot. Darn it. Hmm? Mm. It's okay. Texas has done us the favor of not being cool this December. So, um, if you like this idea of painting from, like, video game properties and everything... Um, I'm going to put some polls up and love to know what you think the most pretty video games are and hmm. landscapes, characters, things you might want to see painted. Because we're going to try to do some gaming streams, just a few on occasion, a couple a month, to, well, they, uh, to love our fandom. Well, and I, I'll say that only Nintendo is out. <laughs> and that's just because they don't have a very friendly policy towards creators. They're, no, they're a little, little yeah. tough on some of if that. If you use their stuff, they just own everything you have. You have to sign this crazy user agreement that signs away all your rights. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, what I think is amazing is that there are so many really talented uh, artists in the video game industry. So and, many. And they create these beautiful, amazing landscapes and this architecture that really only gets to be visited for a brief time by a handful of people who, who go through these adventure games. And... I was talking to Cinnamon, and she was looking over my shoulder at some of these, and we thought some of these beautiful landscapes would be wonderful to paint. And yeah. so we thought, why not do some adventuring? Basically, in a John land? was playing WoW, and he was at this weird place with trees and log rides and this amazing sunset. And I'm like, that'd be a real good painting. Yeah, Melissa was just like, for sure, you need to go to Grizzly Hills and get some footage there. Okay, that like literally is the one we were looking at. Yeah, we were totally going to do that. I was, you know, we need some good grizzly footage. <laughs> really good footage. Yeah, and you know, Shatrath City is really pretty, but you know, you have to spend some time wandering around the city to see that architecture. Um, you know, I want to see like some oceans and some like simple landscapes. <laughs> well, it's just some of those new landscapes that they've constructed out there, where you just look out and the beautiful skies. Uh, I mean, you saw there in Fallen Order how they have the uh, water dynamics working. Mm -hmm. Those are just stunning. You, you got to love the lighting that's done in, in video games. There's some real amazing lighting artists that get involved in. They have a really special skill set. Unless you've worked in the industry, you have no idea what a special little crew of people that is. One of the things I've really enjoyed about video game cinematography is that you're not bound by actually having a light or a camera physically in a location. So if I need to light something, I put a light in front of it and it just is there magically floating in space, producing light where in real cinematography to light a room is complicated. Yeah. <laughs> As we well know. So how do you guys like that? Look, if you've never painted before and you've gotten this step one done, right? Which is red canvas. You've already successfully begun your painting. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're painting, um, like, say, I, I demo Artist Loft, uh, the, the entry-level Artist Loft, which is their more economical one, you might have to do three coats of their red to get a solid surface. If you're using that, be sure to allow that paint to dry thoroughly between coats because otherwise it will want to lift up and undermine. Mm. So that's the trick with that paint is just making sure that those layers are thoroughly dry before you layer another layer on top of it. On this one, pretty much you saw me work it. There's so much pigment in it. I'm just one and done. Mm -hmm. ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Ba -dum. Do you have any more video game footage? I don't know if we need to show any more. Oh, we don't. We can show okay. some while you're chatting. But okay. uh, I'd love to show his, um, what do you call it? The... I just need to sip my coffee. Because this is a creative with coffee. So it I'm is. being creative well, with my coffee. So Let's go full screen. Oh, well, well actually, no. I'm going to go full screen. I'll talk to you. They can... Ooh. They can go see the link to the full screen video in the description from, um, down below. Okay. But one of the things that I was just noticing is that a lot of our community was notice, was commenting how many uh, WoW players there are here in, in 
in chat with us. And we'll tell you guys a secret. We have a little bit of a guild that we come and play with sometimes. Yes. It's an official Arc Sherpa WoW guild. Mm -hmm. And they have a group. We do. And uh, so uh, we're the Just Sherpa. Just be like Art Sherpa WoW. It'll pull up. Mm -hmm. And gosh, the... Uh, Etrig? Yep. We're on Etrig, the Etrig server. And you can just go out there and we, you know, I haven't been active in the last couple of months because of, well, work. Life. <laughs> but we do like to get together and play. And there's a bunch of the Sherpets that get out there and do that. So yeah, don't, for, don't forget if you're in. And we uh, have that Sherpa spirit online. It's true. We, yeah. we, we so, like to go fishing and Guild sets everybody flowers. up, takes care of everybody. Everybody's very loving in that guild. We, we do like to go flower collecting often. Flower collecting is awesome. We. We do all sorts of fun stuff. Okay. Turkey hunts. Turkey hunts. But all right. I, I'm going to dry this while you talk to them a little bit more about the thing. Okay. Because this is taking forever to dry. I can tell by how shiny it is. Oh, yeah. You can tell how dry your paint is because when the acrylic is wet, it's very shiny and it tends to mat up a bit as it dries. So while she's doing that, I was going to, yeah, well, I was going to mention the, we have that guild, but now she's. Drying the paint. So don't forget to use, don't use heat because heat is bad for drying paint. I've talked about that before. You guys kind of know that stuff. Uh, look, there's a little baby Yoda. Um, do check out the links in the description down below because it'll bring you to our website where you can find resources. You can find the traceables. You can find these reference images. You can find uh, information about all sorts of stuff that we have going on there. Our calendar is there. If you want to find other videos that we've produced, there's the, those are there. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this one, though. This is the first of the new Star Wars paintings that she's doing for us. So we should get a few more of those, I think, uh, as we come up. I'm, I'm hoping that this baby Yoda is, you know, he's very cute. I haven't actually sat down and watched The Mandalorian. And that's because... Well, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just, I really like the original story and everyone says, oh, no, 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 this is great. It's extended the new story and the story's great. But I don't know. There's something about the Mandalorian that just says, you're not a stormtrooper and I don't want to watch you rumble around in the forest. What? I don't know. I cannot I, leave you alone for two seconds. I just, I haven't been able to watch the Mandalorian yet. the Mandalorian is fantastic. No, you have. I'm just, I, I can't. It is the way. I keep hearing that. It's the way. But he doesn't even understand it. He doesn't get it. Because you know what? When a Mandalorian rolls, his friends show up, don't they? They these show up. Hokey old school religions. And Welcome to the Star Wars universe. You know, blaster Jedi? and a space. What? All, all I need is a starship and a blaster. And a okay, bike. Jedi. <laughs> 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 John can explain that context to you. <laughs> so I'm going to yeah. take my T-square. And this surface is 11 inches across. So I'm going to divide it in half, which is five and a half inches. And I'm going to make a very light center line. Now you can get these at Michael's. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them a bunch of places. Just don't pay. Like this one is an artist love one. Don't pay a lot of money for it. Okay, guys? Mm -hmm. It should not be crazy expensive. And I just say that because sometimes there's a little bit of price gouging on Michael's. Oh, online? Yeah. Well, I mean, not Michael's. Um, on Amazon. On Amazon. There's no price gouging on Michael's <laughs> ever. Sorry, Michael's. <laughs> Never, ever, ever. The price is the price. If anything, there's just a door buster. But sometimes on Amazon, things can get crazy. And products, I see them mispriced all the time. Oh, so yeah. If you see something there, just especially in art materials, please check the price, check list. Make sure that you're paying about 30% off of whatever anybody says list is. Hmm. So um, those are just artist tips. <laughs> <laughs> so I just made this little center line. And I'm going to give myself a guide before I get my um, fan brush involved. And the first one is I'm going to come up about three, four inches from the bottom. And I'm going to make a nice kind of little curved line here like this you see i go from edge to edge yeah that is the bottom of my little holiday tree that i'm going to be painting here and then from the top here just down a little bit i'm going to give myself a bit of a kind of little triangle guide sometimes if you're very new to trees 
guys, it can be very difficult to get that weird outer shape. And so giving yourself a little bit of guidance before you begin can make a huge difference. I'm also going to just use the width of the ruler to create the trunk. So I'm going to just make a line on either side because this is one inch across. And by placing it that way, you'll make sure that what trunk you have. Now I'm just using charcoal here and that will vanish into the painting as I work. You want to use something on your piece that um, is going to remove easily. So watercolor pencil, uh, chalkboard chalk, something like that. I'm caffeinated. I love our creative mm -hmm. with coffee stuff. Valerie was saying that she understands my reluctance to move away from the original trilogy. And I appreciate that because, you know, I, there was, I, I just, the original trilogy was really good. It is special. It is very it's important. It's very important. It was an important time for all of us. It was. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not at all bagging on the original, right? <laughs> I'm not like suddenly jumping and saying, Jar Jar Banks, I love him. I'm not saying that. What I, I'm I, saying is... I don't know any... If... Look, some things are just good. Rogue One was just good, right? Jar Jar could be a genius. <laughs> I've, I've, you know... In what universe? I've read some of the... You know, the, the theories that he What is knew the metric everything. for genius that we're now measuring? I'm getting, you've upset me so much, I'm just getting water repeatedly. You cannot keep saying crazy Star Wars things. So I'm going to drag off the extra water on my brush. This is a number six Art Sherpa fan. Okay. Now you can get one of my fan brushes. They are made for heavy body paint. Or you can get another company's fan brush. Here's the only thing I say to you. Um, make sure that the bristles are stiff. So you want something like Catalyst is a good one. They have stiff bristles. Um, if you see a, a fan in this line, the Artist Loft Toronto, these are nice stiff ones. They're over in the oil section. I don't know why. And the Simply Simmons over in the oil section, that's the hog bristles. Those are all stiff enough to do what I'm about to do. You guys ready? I am going to attempt to watch you do this. Go. All right. So when you're doing the fan brush, as you do, as you do, you come up on this corner here. I'm going to rock the handle downward and I'm going to tap up and down with the corner of my brush. And this makes the little fluffy weird top of the tree. And I can top bring a little little bit over to the to the right now and go to the left now and kind of start to using just the corner still begin to get these delicate upper spaces, right? Cuz you know when you when you when you start out you need some delicate upper spaces. And you can just tap these in. If I need to switch to more paint, I can get over here on the little corner. That's how we get that started. Let's get it started. All right. So now I'm going to hold the brush handle up. And I'm going to begin to kind of tap some little space here. Right. Brush handles up. And this is giving me some little branches going out. Let's take this out one out longer. Notice that I'm kind of lifting up and down. And if I start to get a little branch, I kind of hang in with it. Make sure that this is sort of solid in the tree because that's where we're going to get our star effect. And whether you're doing the Aurora Borealis or you're doing the child, you really, really need to um, give yourself some room for either effect. Now. I need to know something. Do y'all want a more like portrait version of the baby's like face like I did for Baby Groot? Oh, yeah. They were definitely wanting more, definitely more Baby Yoda. Bone broth or no, like the broth? Do we want soup broth? Oh, I, I, well, I don't, know, sorry, but that little guy carrying his little soup broth is my favorite thing. I'm like, I relate to you, little dude. I don't relate to the eating the frog thing, but this little cup you're carrying. He's so I, cute. Yeah, with the little coffee cup there, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I love it. Great sculpt on that puppet. Now, if you flipped the brush the other way, what would it do? So when you flip the brush the other way, and I'll do it here, you get a frown. So what I like to tell people is handle down brings a frown. Handle up brings a smile. <laughs> I thought you had a cute rhyme there. <laughs> I know. I've worked on it for a while. If you guys can come up with a cute rhyme, I'll start using it, but that's just how it works. 
But now that we've had this awkward moment, you'll be like, got it. Down, frown, upward, smile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that just lets you know which way the, bra- the, the tree is going to curve because pines kind of either have a downward branch, right, where it's, it feels like the weight of the universe is pulling their branches down. Now, notice that I bring some of them out and some of them in. I try to make it a little bit kind of uneven. Hmm. But I am making sure that my center is fairly well solidly black. Solidly black. Now it's going to be an interesting thing here because at first we're going to do this sort of in black. Yeah. And then we're going to come back and go over it in white. Because we weird like that. Okay. Just still going. <laughs> so they're up for more, more, more Baby Yoda? Oh, yes. There was many, many uh, upvotes for the portrait painting. Maybe. Oh, good. Good. Then we'll, well, maybe we'll hit another one like We've got another, uh, we've got the uh, Magic Monday, kind of an evening one that we do. So we'll think about doing some more of this. Mm, that'd be great. But very much like a Disney fan art license, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> so I could bring all this love to you and your fans all the time, please. All right. So I'm going to continue to pull. Notice that I've got the handle upward. And now I'm going to kind of round i'm gonna shape my tree you're you're making a nice little hedge here you're you're shaping your tree you can see that i'm giving these little branches that sort of little downward everywhere i put one of these i will come back with white so you just plan to be going back over it again a little bit and i'll show you how to do that very successfully i'm not going to take this down into the trunk I'm going to go ahead and paint this all in. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And smooth it out if you want to, unless you really like the texture. Just don't mess up your branches. Now I sort of train them. If I do want to bring a little bit of it into the thing down, I'm just going to bring this down here just to kind of give it a an ombre, a blend. There we go. By the way, I just taught y'all how to do basic Christmas tree shape with your fan brush. Mm -hmm. So if you needed that information this holiday season, we gave it to you. Now the next part, what I'm going to say is, and I'll make sure this is on the the website or you can go find it on my YouTube channel. And it's on most of my video pages. Splattering. Now you can very carefully take a toothpick, a dotting tool, the back of a small detail brush and carefully dot out stars. And give yourself, you know, some time to do that. You can be very meticulous. Just remember to clump them together closely and then open them up and have them be different sizes. Or if you don't want to spend all that time, which I never do, which is why uh, I developed this tool. (laughs) This is my dotting tool to open my little thing of paint. So like, you know, you can go like that. See, that makes it that makes a star, right? It does. It made a star. It made a star. You do a whole bunch of that. Or you can get a little bit of this fluid paint out. And this is my splatter tool. If you don't have this tool, watch my how to splatter stars video. And it will show you some other ways to splatter and give you a bunch of tips on that. But right now I'm going to just go like that. And I'm going to very carefully splatter. Now it is going to get into my red a bit. I see that. And that's okay. You got some overspray. You're going to get some overspray. But what you want is a nice amount of stars. Right? Yeah that you're you're you know are is on your tree and i'm going to also take my brush clean with some water and i'm going to just brush this out a bit and the re- only reason i'm brushing some of these out and they're going to leave white streaks by the way is that i don't want the dot showing not the white part of the dot but the structure of the dot and i have to repaint a lot of this red anyway so if i can oh so you're just smoothing the surface out so that it doesn't leave a little raised I love how you, like, you explain me better than I explain myself sometimes. (laughs) Well, I'm just trying to understand what you're doing. That's what I'm doing is I'm just trying to make sure it isn't going to be that raised surface, right? You you just want it smooth, not textured. I want it smooth, not textured. I'm going to come back with red. And it's okay that a few of these stars escape out of the branches of your trees. It kind of creates this really cool field of space effect that I really enjoy. Mm. Now I'm going to dry this fast with my hair dryer so I okay. can get the next coat of red. And this would be like, I think this is like stage 
three of the paintings. So if you're still here, you've gotten through layer three. This is helpful when you watch the to see the step by step because you can print those step by step outs to help give you some anchor into where we are in the painting and the way the layers are constructed. So while she's saying it, yes, you can find those uh, step by steps, the traceable, all that stuff down in the that reference image right there. You can find that in the link in the description down below. You'll also find a link to all of the materials and the uh, Mr. X Garbit's video and all of the other cool stuff that you saw here in the in what we're doing. We have links down there. And there she is. There I did I wasn't I didn't think you'd be very long. Again. All right, so <laughs> salt pepper fans just went, <laughs> what? All right, so I'm going to load up my big brush again, and I'm going to just go back and paint my background, especially outer at these outer edges red again. Overshoot. Okay, so it's okay, like I said, that you leave a few little stars in the tree, and then I can always bring a couple brush strokes in through the branches. This is just about creating that effect. Now, some of you may feel like, dude, I don't know what you're doing. I just really like that splatter all over the black, the red, and everything in the duality of that. It looks like snow and stars and all this stuff at the same time. Also a fine artistic decision, and I will not personally feel offended, uh, mostly because it's fan art. So, right. <laughs> You do you. <laughs> you do you. Just don't do it commercially. That's right. <laughs> Just don't print t-shirts and tell them that we told you it or was okay. Or make product on Etsy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like, <laughs> You know, if okay. you're doing this for your kid's room, in your house, you know, because you've decided to like Star Wars it up, or maybe your own room in your house. I have a lot of friends, adults who have Star Wars themed rooms. What about the side of your 1978 Dodge Absolutely fan? do it. Have fun. That's okay. Right. Show your fandom. Uh, do that. Not that's not legal advice, by the way, because what I'm telling you is not actually legally accurate. We're we're not a legal show. We're a painting <laughs> show. But there is kind of a culture of being a little more uh, friendly towards fan art going on right now, and an understanding that we, as uh, people who love a property, need to be creative around it. You know, sometimes we got to make a Yoda cookie or a Yoda cake. Got to maintain that. But if you're going to make a Yoda cake for a commercially viable thing, you do need to get a license. Yes, you do. You can make one for your kid's home birthday party, but don't open up a business. No. That would not be cool. That is not cool. They might send the Mandalorian to get you. Oh, man. Just really would like a fan art license. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's the only thing is that you can plan on going to the next Star Wars, con Star Wars convention and just seeing a sea of Mandalorian helmets. You know? I do hope to see that. 501st is going to be a little thin on the ground. As we have all of the... Uh... You think the 501st is going to convert to Mandalorian? Well, I think... Cosplay? That, uh, I think that the 501st has a higher standard for the costuming requirements because it's screen ready like you have to look like someone Do you realize on screen? you just threw shade like at anyone who just came as a Mandalorian saying oh, no, you no. couldn't meet the costume requirements of the 501st so, <laughs> so you threw out a Mandal There's two groups there's the uh there's the the uh, I want to say headhunters bounty hunters bounty yeah. hunters and the bounty hunters tend to have a lot of Mandalorian style helmets and things like that and now that the Mandalorian has come out I imagine that that group of well, because they, they do bounties, right? That's like part of their their faith. And because there's no no two Mandalorians are necessarily the same, you can just make one up, and so you're you register your marks and your stuff, but that gives you a lot of artistic freedom. Yeah, Whereas, that sounds more creative to me. Right, but the five hundred first other than a clone. Well, right. So the five hundred first, you have to make your <laughs> armor look exactly like it was on screen in order to pass the. Because they do a lot of um, charity, and so they want all the stormtroopers looking the same if you're going to be in that stormtrooper group, which makes sense. All right. See how neat and beautiful that is? And now you've learned about cosplay, the 501st, and... <laughs> we have some deep feelings here. You've learned some stuff you didn't know. So, that's fantastic, right? To learn new things is always wonderful.
To do the next part, I have to dry the surface again because I'm gonna be using my T-square to create the level line across the tree where I bisect the landscape and pull that down. Now, I'm gonna dry this with my hair dryer. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you guys. Oh, that's a good, I'm gonna tell Cinnamon about that, uh, Yamni. That's great. I'm gonna, I'll tell her, there's Yamni in chat. You guys, if you are watching the show and you have not had a chance to join us in a live at one of these chats, you really, really should. It's, it's fantastic. All of our communities here in here hanging out, chatting away, and uh, we, have a, we have a chance to get along. So Yamini just added something real cute here. I'm going to tell Cinnamon about it. And the reason why Cinnamon doesn't get to see the chat is she gets distracted. It's distracting enough for me to see you guys and be like, uh, what's going on? So if I give it to her, she just stops and looks at the screen and doesn't do anything. So... I can't, and can't hit. No, uh, I will say when you're drying your surface, make sure you thoroughly dry it because when you use your T-square, as you move the T-square across those little dots, they'll smear. So you want to make sure they're thoroughly dry. That's why she's taking the time to make sure that she gets them nice. And she's touching them. See, that's to make sure because they can skin where you'll get a little thin uh, layer of cured paint over the top of the dot. But then as soon as you brush it, it breaks the surface and smears. That's why yeah. she was touching it. It's a, yeah, it's a big problem. It's why it takes me a little longer to dry the splatter between, between the things. I would love to know, shout it out in the comments below, if, you are, if you're making this for yourself because you're a huge fan, or if you're going to be gifting this as that last minute, oh my gosh, I'm so glad this came up gift for a fan in your life, right? Because mm -hmm. I know like, I, my little Star Wars fan was so happy to see this because he knows he gets the test painting and he was super pumped. So I imagine your little Star Wars hearts are also feeling like ours was feeling. So I, I'm going to come up a little bit on the tree. I like to give it a few inches that I can go down into the white to bring this down. But I've got to give it um, also enough room that I can put my star here. So I just take a line. I'm going to go from black to black. This is a watercolor pencil. I just need to be able to see this. Oh, and if I want you to see it, I guess I could, um, I want you to see it, I could do this chalk, which is a little bit thick, but I can remove it with water. So that's what I'm doing is I'm creating that very level line. Very level line. It's very, very, it's squared up. It's a squared up. And to finish that, I'm going to need a squared up brush. Now, this is a bright. I was just asked, could I use a chisel for effects like this? Yes, chisels are just sharper. Um you can use a lot of stuff. But what you want is a brush that gives you a nice clean edge. If you don't have a brush that gives you a nice clean edge, a low tack tape, like washi tape can be your friend. I'll show you real quick because you can go across and make a line. Hmm. So, and you can turn masking tape into low tack tape by rubbing it on your sofa. <laughs> the sticky side down on your sofa going tap 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 get all that lint your shirt or jeans they'll all work just anything yeah that can pick just anything lint. that will lint it so there's a lot of ways to get here i just always happen to have some washi tape around and look it says magical believe love unicorn magical believe love so how do we not love that so these are all the ways to do it right i'm going to come here with this nice brush and i'm going to just make sure that right here I have a nice, level, clean line before I ever get back into the fan. Making sure I'm going to come back with my fan, but I'm just giving myself some room to do. You're just going to paint all that in there so that it's just a little snowy ground. Yeah, it's the little snowy ground that the baby is coming from. Now, at this stage, I'll also turn this over to the side, and I'm going to start to bring down this sort of, like, reflection, and I'm going to take it from here and come down like that. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that at the edge here, as the paint gets dry and I kind of lift the brush, it gives me that sort of faded effect. Oh, yeah, that dry which brushiness. I, yeah, which I dig, dig, dig. There we go. Because I want some dry brush. There we go. So now I've got this beautiful trunk effect. You just don't want any black to show. There we go. Back into my fan, fan, fan. 
Now I've got some fluid white paint and I've got some heavy body paint. I'm just going to be using up my white. Um, and I'm going to come here and go over what I had a bit with my white. Yeah, kind of coming over that. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit. Painting over it. That's all I'm doing. It's just painting over it. It's okay if little bits of it peek out. That reminds me. Hmm. Yamini had a really good... Hi, Yamini! Uh, it says, handle down brings the frown, handle up turns it up. <gasps> Yamini, you're a genius! Handle down brings the frown, handle up turns it up. I, I, like... If I have any mod in the room, write that down for me. So I, don't I just did. <laughs> Thank you, baby. That was really good, Yamini. The Yamini rhyme. That is fantastic. I have the cleverest community in the world. I really do. I mean, it's not a surprise. We're all creative. We're doing art. So mm -hmm. they should be super clever, right? They're using their imagination. Isn't that great? Just yeah. right over it. And a little bit of black that shows just creates some shading that actually adds if that's not the most amazing thing in the world to your painting. So that's a fantastic side effect of that. Oh, I'm so glad the AC's on. Just wish it was blowing on me. I'll okay. take, I'm going to say thank you to all the servicemen and women in the 501st that are joining us here today and their husbands and wives. They, uh, the 501st are good guy, are bad guys doing good work. They go to a lot of charity events. They help, they help out in oh so many ways to make magical events for people who need them. So the empire brings cookies. Thank you to and good all. Snacks. No, I don't know the if they bring cookies. I'm just. <laughs> <joking>. <laughs> they are. They actually do a lot of amazing charity work, and it's an incredible group. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to give any shade to the Mandalorians, and they're also good. They, you know, they do their thing. The actually the bounty hunt, bounty hunters do a lot of a lot of the same good work. They uh, tend to go to the same places. They uh, do a lot of the same stuff. It's just a different group. One's bounty hunters, and the other one's works for the Empire. <laughs> the only group that has managed to have galactic peace lasting through the universe. They've been able to maintain it. <sighs> John is very pro-Empire. I don't really know how to explain it to y'all. I'm going to just brush some more down. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm just saying, they, they kind of got their stuff together. He's converted my son, which is like the worst. <laughs> and the only thing we can all agree on is that Ewoks are very bad. <laughs> e Ewoks are the most dangerous tactical fighting force in the known universe. Yeah. They are an indigenous species that cannot be removed. And they're are just, I mean, they take... Uh, they take Imperial troopers, rebels, Jedi, Sith, chew them up, spit them out. Literally Dude, eat them. Literally eat them. Yep. Literally eat them. Go back and watch that. See, uh, you'll, you'll See be surprised. Catch, the, catch that they eat them. I mean, we're never going to stop warning you about this because we think people need to know. Don't go to Endor. It's not a good place. In everyone else's movie, it's a horror movie. <laughs> everybody else's movie it's like one of those slasher films it's just in star wars it's like oh it's cute they play music which is actually scary considering what they do well if you giant brought a giant gold robot that looks like a talking god well sure you might get away with some stuff but short of that stay off that planet <laughs> like really far away <laughs> i know ian jackson somewhere is with us going yes it's so true oh no wired recently wrote an article that supported this I want to shout out my other Star Wars friend, Tani and uh, Matt and uh, Dom and all my Star Wars friends out we there. We have a lot of Star Wars friends. Yeah, out in the universe. So we're just, <laughs> I'm just filling time while we're white, waiting okay, for paint dry. I'm just letting some stuff to dry. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you got to fill time to let paint dry. So I'm going to take my um, T-square, and now I'm going to get my detail brush. Now, guys, yes, you could use a paint pen like many of you love, the Posca paint pens, P-O-S-C-A. Many of you love those, and they are fantastic. But if you don't have one, you're going to use fluid paint like what I have here and this little monogram liner. And you're going to come to the center. Not quite all the way to the center. I want to leave a little gap. You have left a little gap? Yeah. Make a little line. Make a little line. Making some little lines. 
and then clean your uh, T-square. That gives you some nice little straight lines. It's good now to come in and kind of like uh, straighten that out. You know what that beautiful little dot is? Huh. That's the Falcon jumping to hyperspace. Dude, I almost like did X wings like flying in like in black, also in splatter. Oh, that. Would and be then good. I was like, people gotta go home. Yeah. <laughs> it can get really problematic for me once it starts, like tropical scenes with death stars instead of moons. I'm into it. <laughs> I'm into it. So I get a little shade sometimes for doing these weird things, but remember, even if this isn't your thing, I paint a lot of flowers and landscapes. So okay. just wait a minute, because I'll paint what you love. We'll get back but to every that. once in a while, you guys have got to let me go crazy. What? Yeah, yeah. We'll get back to that a little later. What? What thing? The flowers. Oh yeah, we'll get back to flowers soon enough. I think I think we've got a nice pagoda coming up on the YouTube channel. A nice snowy pagoda mm. with a pretty pine. It's very pretty and a Christmas floral on a big giant canvas. So like you know, stuff will continue. These lines I will want to make longer than my side lines. So I like to make the vertical lines that I'm going to have just a little bit longer than my side lines. And you can see I use the T-square to straighten what I've got. Oh, that's a really good one. That one's going to be all super sparkles. So see, we've, begin, we've begun to sparkle our star. I got a little crazy with my star. That's all right. All right. Now I'm going to come here, and I'm going to make a little diagonal line. You could use the T-square again, but I'm going to just freehand this. See if I end up regretting it. <laughs> Every time I freehand, yo, whenever you have a mistake on the freehand, just come back with a clean brush before the paint is dry. And generally, you can get up what you've got and fix it without having to, like, repaint. Do let the area completely dry before you come back and fix it, though, because the paint will bleed through wherever the water is. There we go. And just paint these wonderful little sparkle bits. Have fun with it. You can see whenever I have a problem, what do I do? I erase. Mm. That's what I do. And you can erase too. See what I mean there about the water? Yeah. <clears throat> Let me get it in a second. I'll just do this one. <laughs> and it's really just about, you know, finding that little spot in. Uh, still wet. When they're wet, they're problematic. There we go. So what I'm trying to do is get a point at the taper of each line mm. to get the effect. I want a little point. Yeah. There we go. So we got the little points. Now when that's all done, and we have that a sparkling up in my star, I'm going to take my dotting tool and take the big dot, right? And I'm going to come put that in the center. And that kind of helps me define that as a star. Yeah. So now it's twinkling up into the sky as much as it needs to. Now. I'm going to check if that's dry. If it's dry enough, I'll put out a smidge of uh, a smidge of red. And a smidge of blue. A smidgey smidge. Cuz some of this is nice to get in now. And I'm going to make a little snow reflection. I'm going to come here. And I've got my fan. I want to be real light with it, and I'm going to come kind of on either side of the the pathway, and I'm going to brush down a little bit of red. Just a kind of small reflection of it. If I need a little bit of white paint to kind of blend it out, I can get that. It's like just a little kiss of a reflection in the snow. Trying to talk about this frozen space. 
You can also just leave it white if you find this technique a little challenging. Just mm -hmm. leave it white. Don't be stressed about it. None of these are mandatory. <laughs> I'm going to take a bit of my blue, just a bit, and quite a lot of my white. I'm going to come right in the middle and add my blue reflection. Kind of coming down. You can see when I want to bring it down, I go on the edge of my brush and I hand tool down that little bit there and go ahead and blend the blue kind of in through the red a bit. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Kind of creating that optical reflection. And if you're all good, you just remove the tape across. And that oh, should yeah. give you a really wonderful straight line that you can work from. That's awesome. It kind of does not suck, right? Now all we need is a little dude. To pull off the uh, extra paint. So I will give you guys a traceable, but I'm going to show y'all how to sort of draw him in. So I need to make sure that I have enough room for the robe. So I'm gonna come up, try to measure that and tell you how far up I'm planning on taking it. You can kind of get a sense of it. But again, there's gonna be traceable. So if this is not your jam, don't worry. Just a little over two inches up, guys. Two inches up, get the white one. So I'm gonna come up here and I make just above that line a kind of squishy ellipse. There I'm doing. I don't know if John's camera can pick that up. And then off my squishy to lips. So if you look at the arc of this, it's like this apex. You want to come down a little bit and bring an ear out. Come down a little bit and bring an ear out. Super fun stuff. Yeah, I get a little excited about the ears. I'm going to take my number four round and my fluid paint. And I'm going to paint in my head and it'll help you guys see it too yeah i'm doing that yeah I'm gonna paint that in that's pretty cool i'm gonna come very delicately out the ear very delicately out the ear that's pretty good Now I'm going to add like a collar. And the collar is interesting because I've only got about that much space above it for the eyes. So I've got to pull it out there. I'm going to do a very similar one across over here. And then we're going to bring a little sleeve out. Comes out in this little weird shape. I need to need room for my three-fingered hand. Pull the sleeve back in. And then bring the robe essentially down. For his little thing. Now his other hand is sort of tucked in. But I want to imply the little space of it. I'm going to bring that down. So it's kind of like a bell, right? Mm -hmm. Once you have the bell in, you're going to very carefully from this delicate tip pull the air in. I widen it till it gets down into the robe. Because I want to imply that this is quite high up on the baby. Who is 50, by the way. So imagine the gestation period of that species. It's like you really hope it's an egg. <laughs> you really don't want a mammal live birth on that one. <laughs> if it's 50 and still a toddler. Uh. Also, you would want a species that did not require mom and dad's help to grow up. <laughs> like, like one of those ones that comes out ready to eat, like baby sharks. Baby shark. Da, 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 da. Sorry. So somewhere in the universe, there was a scream. Pulling this down. Just painting. This is wonderful. Down here. 
And I'm going to just, I bring the robe a bit forward and you can kind of see it over the, the thing. And at the center, I'm going to come in and then go out again. So that's how I'm going to talk about that kind of like folding of the robes. Now, at this stage, you want, I'm painting pro paint, lots of pigment. You're going to need a couple coats. So let's just hit it with one more coat. There we go. That's just to make sure that uh, when, you, when you're going through and, and putting the next layer on there that it doesn't get sticky or drag or lift. So if you just real quick heat, uh, if you just real quick hit the surface with non-heated air so it doesn't get sticky, you can just quickly dry it off, but the heat will make it tacky, so don't use that. Yeah. I don't even know what we're saying, but I'm agreeing. <laughs> don't use heat because it makes the, stick, the paint sticky. It, it really can. And it can uh, also cause color shift and all kinds of little issues. It's not horrible. It won't ruin your painting. It's just something to be aware of. And sometimes, you know, teachers forget to tell students about that problem in the product. But if you know, you can easily, even if you're new to painting, make adjustments to those challenges. I like to move my canvas so that it's easy on me when I'm painting it. How's everybody doing, John? Really good. They're loving the fact that you're doing some of these more fan-inspired works. Uh, I really appreciate my community a great deal, and I love painting things that let you express your love of stuff like this. So we've got this crazy little dude, right? Now, you could be done with the silhouette. People would kind of know. Them. They might not necessarily know it's the baby, but they would kind of have an idea that it's something like uh you know the species that yoda was but we're gonna need to do the hand really i'm gonna show you how to do the baby hand for those of you that saw him use his force for the first time you know how cute this little thing is so i'm gonna come here and i'm gonna make a small little round nub coming out that's the palm then the center finger is our longest finger and it tapers because they have claws. They're cute little baby claws, but they are claws. I'm going to bring another little finger out. And then a shorter little thumb out. Okay, so there we go. Now it's going to be a matter of tapering these in to each other. So I'm going to widen in here. Well, not too dissimilar to the shape we were using on a Christmas tree. Hmm. Or it could be just winter tree. doesn't have to be Christmas. No judgment. No projection into your life at all. Look at that. So now I got that cute little force palm, <laughs> which is awesome sauce. And the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get my blue just on my brush. It's okay if I get a little white into it because I want it to sort of blend. And I'm going to come right here to the collar a bit. Come outline it and then a little bit in for the sleeve. Now, I'm in. Bring this around and let's add a bit of a shadow inside there. Isn't that fantastic? There we go. Not a lot of detail, right? We're just telling, we're just telling a little bit of the story. Now, almost in line with the ears, but just a little bit down, I'm going to bring the neckline. This one comes here, also kind of wrinkled, and there, comes in. Right? You starting to see it now? Yeah. Down the center. And I definitely like to create the beginning of a shadow under those robes. I may remove that little blue boo boo I have right here. There we go. See, all gone. All gone. And I must put out a little bit of my fluid paint. Now, you could use your heavy body, but I find for this type of detail work, this is a wonderful thing to have. And again, remember, they bring it into small bottles. You could use craft paint. But I'm going to come here and right 
here, kind of low on the face, I'm going to make the teeniest, tiniest little nose. See how tiny that is? Yeah. That's so small. And then I'm going to do a little sesame seed. So the eye comes up. Little tear duck here comes out. Very big. Big, 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 big. Uh, if you consider the whole surface of the face. And then fill that in. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? Nice big sesame seed eye. Guess what you get to do? The other eye. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the one that everyone's like, not the other one. I'm so good for the first one, but I'm going to do the other one. I'm going to come up here and using this as a guide, I bring up another little side and then using this as a guide. All right, now we've got those two cute, adorable little b -b baby eyes. But we've got to let that dry a little bit, and we've got some stuff we want to do here. Now, I'm going to use a spray bottle to thin, and I'm going to add some water to my blue paint. You could also just use craft blue paint. It would be okay. I'm going to put a little more blue into it. I'm just making my heavy body paint fluid. Sometimes it's good to know how to do this. Um, to thin your paint with just the water, so I'm gonna put a little more out. Using my artist knife again. I'm trying to make it a similar consistency to what I have in my bottle, so that I can use my dotting tool effectively. So when I have it thin enough, wipe off my palette knife, find my dotting tool. I'm gonna come here, big dot. All under here, I'm going to add these dots. They're kind of like a little reflection. And I like it sparkling. I have to tell you, when I did this the first time, I just looked and looked and looked at it, and I couldn't get the dots out of my head. That happens to me sometimes as an artist where I'm like, it needs this thing, and I'm going to paint this thing. So you'll notice some of my dots are bigger, some are smaller. And I'm going to be pulling them down the center here. Is it his force power hmm. we can see represented in art? Maybe. Is it the sparkle of ice in front of him? Just using the dotting tool. And just taper that down. All right. Now when you have that all in there, it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. We're going to take a little bit of our fluid paint and our blue paint and make kind of a mid, mm, almost a sky color at first. And here's how we do the reflection. You're going to come across the top of the, you're going to come here on the eye, dot. And then something a little more in the center and then dot, dot. See that? I know, it's fussy. I'm going to make another little longer arc dot here in the center. Dot. Pretty good. Pretty okay. Starting. It's good. Now I'm going to get my just white. I'm 
and add some hot spots. And what I mean by that is brighter reflections that kind of show its little shiny little little eyes. Hmm. And we're going to get some of this kind of blue and white paint that we have. And we're going to sign it. That turned out really awesome. All right. So things you've got to remember. I'll go for it. Things you've got to remember. Uh, the traceable, the step-by-step, -step, and the video for replay is probably the easiest to watch off of our website. I will put something here on the page so you can find that. I'll put it into the comments of this live video so you can find it in artsherpa.com. This is going to have a video page. Uh, just give me like 30 minutes and then search Yoda and this video and the other Yoda video will pull up. Um, also, they're traceable step by steps. So if you want to just do the Aurora Borealis because you're not like loving. I don't know why it would be, but it's OK if you don't love Star Wars. It's OK. It's OK. <laughs> it's all right. There's an Aurora Borealis version, too, that you can do. <sighs> Thank you so much for being here today. I will plan for us to meet again and work on some more. Baby Shota. Baby. Baby Shota. You like that, John? I do. Baby Shota. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.